anthropologists will differ about where uh, we want to draw the line in terms of when a society has law and when it doesn't, but it's certainly common, I think, if we read uh, literature and cultural anthropology to note that societies uh, that don't have what we would call states nonetheless have what we would call laws. Um, the fact is that if you have uh, norms that people endorse and that and you have mechanisms for uh, enforcing those, for ensuring that when they're violated there are ways of dealing with that, you've got law. And I think What's clear is that people without top-down control for a whole range of reasons can support and maintain norms and I think people can also accept, and this is important, kind of second-order norms about enforcement procedures. And uh, when they do that, when there is uh, enough endorsement of enforcement procedures uh, that those are treated as legitimate because they think part of Part of law, it seems to me, is this recognition that something is legitimate, that it's not just a naked exercise of power. Then, um, at that point, there can be stable mechanisms for dispute resolution and law enforcement uh, that don't have to be directed by a central authority. They can be, and this is the expression that you get in both economists and in social scientists of other kinds, and anthropologists and so forth, law can be polycentric. That you can have, instead of a single legal authority in a given geographic area, you can have a variety of institutions with overlapping jurisdictions and mandates that in various ways negotiate out their relationships with each other and their relationships with particular people. When that happens, uh, you can have law, systems in which law is maintained uh, even without, uh, without Leviathan.